Hello! Welcome to another episode of Superhero Gaming with Andrew. Uh, here I will show you some of the bases that I took on to uh, take down Kingpin's men and his uh, illegitimate businesses. So I love it. So uh, Kingpin's bases are construction sites. And again, it's based off like Kingpin and... Marvel's Daredevil on Netflix where uh, Kingpin uses uh, construction as a front so yeah I remember when I first uh, did and uh, the Kingpin base and man it was so hard because I was doing it all wrong trying to play it like Batman uh, Arkham games and for people who say it's just like Arkham I'm like, seriously, no, it is not. Because you can't play it like Arkham, like waiting for someone to attack you just so you can dodge them. No, you have to be like very proactive and just fight in the air and not wait to like take on everyone at once. I remember my first time, and this was on simple uh, normal mode, that uh, <laughs> I like failed so bad and... And then I realize, you know, fight in the air, use your webs and whatnot, and fight like Spider-Man, not like Batman. And I do see some things that are inspired from the Arkham games, like the takedowns, but and maybe like a dive bomb thing to like shockwave people. But other than that, that's it. Because uh, I hear that this game was inspired by Devil May Cry and other games like that. And Alright, sorry I'm back. So I did a recording that continued this, but for some reason my stupid recorder couldn't like, process that. So yeah, I had everything all said for the rest of the episode. Now I'm going to do it all again, in which... I'll try to remember everything that I said, but yeah, I love integrating the gadgets into the combat. I mean, it makes things that much more interesting, because it's not just fun just to wail away on a guy. I mean, you gotta, like, use gadgets, use your ability, mobility, throwing stuff. Uh, use the bad guys to, like... Send the other bad guys flying in different ways. And I love doing things like you can like uh, hit a guy up in the air and then uh, use a trip mine on him so he'll web himself to the ground. And, uh, and another way is to use a web bomb instead of a trip mine when you launch a guy in the air. And you can just, he and his buddies can get all webbed up. And uh, you can just web slam him down and he'll get stuck down. So yeah, I thought that was really cool. I mean, man, I don't know if you guys ever had this experience, but whenever I watch someone play a video game, I'm like, I can do better than that. But uh, now I'm looking at me, because uh, for those of you that don't know, I... Uh, I started out like just play the game without commenting and then when I have the video in front of me on a computer screen then I'll record and uh, it so yeah but I did get a headset in which I think is really awesome because I never got a headset before thank you again to that fan that gave that to me you rock so I love this iron uh, spider outfit from the MCU and at first when I saw Spider-Man Homecoming where I saw the Iron Spider suit, I was like so disappointed about uh, the that it wasn't a direct ab adaptation of the suit. But you know, then, you know, seeing the movie and I realized, you know what, I'm glad they didn't do a direct adaptation because a straight adaptation from a comic book wouldn't do well because with movies you got to add things to make it more real to the audience and plus uh, also uh, in Civil War in the movie 
they handled Tony Stark better than uh, the comic version did. Comic version straight up turned him into an, an antagonist, a villain, basically. While um, the movie one still does, of course, makes mistakes trying to do the best that he thought he can, but he, uh... Oh, man, what was it? Um... But, you know, he realizes he was wrong, and uh, he's not the actual ones that threw his friends away in prison. And that he actually let them get away and what, whatever. And that he was more of a good guy. And plus, he wanted uh, Peter Parker to be his own man. In which, that's why the MCU suit, ref you know, is basically a mesh of, like... Iron Spider suit and regular Spider-Man suit. And I thought that was very appropriate because uh, Tony wants Peter Parker to do the right thing for justice and responsibility. Not to please him or to get on his group of Avengers, but to do the right thing. And I love this Electro-proof uh, Spider-Man costume. It's really cool. This is a costume that he used in the comics to fight Electro. It's just, man, I'm grateful that they got all of the costumes, almost all of them, in the in the game. I mean, I would argue this is, this Spider-Man game has more costumes in here than any other game does. And, um, oh boy, what else was I going to say? But yeah, back to uh, Iron Man. Because uh, Iron Man changed, because he's learning to be not like an egotistical guy. He wants Peter to be Peter. Uh, where in the comics, he gave him like red and gold to like uh, please his ego. It's like, hey, you're my boy. But, uh, and Iron Man did like feel bad, both in film and in comics, for what he's done and realized, you know what, I shouldn't have done that. I should have listened to Cap. So, yeah, and I thought, yeah, and Iron Man did redeem himself in comics because, you know what, that's the thing. Whenever a hero goes bad or something like that, the comic book companies will automatically redeem the hero because, uh, you know, it's bad business just to have a hero stay bad forever. I mean, it's, you know, one of those things in which... Uh, one of the joys and yet one of the irritations of comic books in which change isn't permanent and they still s uh, and the heroes still stay the same more or less so yeah boom <laughs> but uh yeah there's tons of spider-man gamers that I saw online that I'd be like, oh man, I'm going to be like them, not only be like them, I'm going to be better than them and like beat them at their own game. And then I realized that is a really bad way to do things because uh, you need to take care of yourself. Uh, well, no, you've just got to be yourself and you've got to have fun. And more importantly, the best kind of thing to do with the one to re the gl glory is where you help people in need and you just be you that's the glory so yeah and uh because i've learned that especially when i tried so hard to be like them and try to be better than them on you uh, on this game because you know what no one's perfect yeah no one really is I mean, even the players, I mean, they struggled and whatnot. Oh, yeah, and I love it when Spider-Man webs up, like, multiple bad guys into this huge web ball. Reminds me of two that I would arguably say two of some of the greatest Spider-Man artists of all time. Where Joe Scott Campbell had a, did a drawing of Spider-Man, like, uh... Crouching down, crawling on the ball of web of bad guys that he had, has up. And another one is of Todd McFarlane, where uh, Spider-Man is carrying the huge bat, huge web ball of, like, 
bad guys in it ready to throw it at a wall or whatever or another enemy it was really cool yeah and usually when i start these uh challenges or heck even a crime uh when i take on a crime i always like do um stealth takedowns and when i started this game i was wrong to think that stealth takedowns in this game was limiting that was my mistake because with gadgets and different types of techniques that you can do, you can do so many things. You can use a gadgets to like one eliminate, incapacitate, incap blah, blah, sorry, incapacitate a uh, an enemy like right here, and then that leaves the other one open for a takedown. In which with Batman you can do that, but you can't take him out. Uh, I mean, maybe you can with the sonic battering, but I'll show you that later. But yeah, and you can do things like with the environment, with the gadgets, and uh, you're not just, you know, only, you're not left with just two options for, um, for stealth. So as you can see, I tried copying, uh, a gamer called Swiftly Unknown where he uh, did that and I did that trick wrong but uh, yeah it was at a point I gave up and I'm like whatever and did you guys notice because I love punk rock spider-man where he has the um, uh, the spider-man face logo on the sides of his uh, sneakers I think that's awesome so uh, spider-punk is from another dimension where uh, but in this game, it's Spider-Man, uh, the real, the Peter Parker normal one. But uh, from the comic that this costume come from, the Spider-Man of that world is is I want to say James Brown, but I'm trying to remember his name. He was the original Prowler, and he takes on Norman Osborn with like a punk rock rebellion. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And he actually does wield, like, a guitar as a weapon. Yeah, I love it. And, uh, oh, with the gadgets. I love it when you uh, web a guy and you punch him, like, to a wall that you can just web him right there and he'll be, like, stuck there. Where you integrate, again, gadgets into combat so that way you're not just doing one or two things. You always spice it up with, like, locomotion movements and whatever and oh i have to say <laughs> watching this i'm like i can do better than that uh screw screw older me who did a horrible job but uh i i see secretly trash talk because again i'm like i can do better but then i realize man I, I i'm no different than the other guys and uh and at the end of the day, we're still playing the game. We're all still doing the same thing. But yeah, ouch. Oh, there's the guitar power move. And that's another thing I love. You can use suit powers to work with your gadgets. It makes this game feel very sandboxy. And uh, when I mentioned before about, like, service is the ultimate glory, I got that from a game called... Uh, where I watch a cinematic of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. I really want to play that game. I played the first one, and I love Cowboys, because, you know, the game and Cowboys remind me of my grandpa, my mom's dad, in which uh, he was a cowboy, and he loved John Wayne. So, yeah. Boom! And, oh, for a second, I thought that grenade was going to go off. Oh, yeah, and I love webbing up if I didn't mention this already, webbing up grenades and just <laughs> uh, throwing it at a bad guy, you know, the non-lethal one. Spider-Man never kills. Never. Hey, I got it right that time! But, you know, I'm excited for the new Miles Spider-Man game. That does look cool. I mean, it really does. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer, and I can't wait for the new Avengers game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm grateful for how far out the designers went for this game. And, oh, and this is a tease right here. 
why I did this is uh, it was to tease you. I'm going to play as Spider-Man 29. Psych! I'm actually going to play Spider-Man Noir. And doing the Kingpin base on a rainy day, wearing as the Noir version, was perfect. Just for mood and because, again, Spider-Man Noir is Spider-Man Noir. And Spider-Man Noir is awesome. I first got introduced to the character officially because I've known about him. And I was like, yeah, whatever. But I officially knew him in Beanox's Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. And that game was really good, despite its major flaws. And, uh, yeah, so what else? Because um, it had Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Man 299, and Ultimate Spider-Man from the Ultimate Spider-Man books. And, uh, you know, and I honestly believe that they're the ones that kind of brought back the whole uh, Spider-Verse thing, because, uh, you know, before then, no one really cared about those different Spider-Men. Uh, not for a long time, and I thought the way they handled that game was so good. And the rest of the Spider-Man games they made, not so much. Uh, but what else? Um, yeah, but the whole Spider-Verse thing was introduced in the whole uh, 1990s Spider-Man cartoon show, in which it's at the end of the, the series where Spider-Man teams up with his uh, other counterparts from other worlds. He teams up with uh, Scarlet Spider, in which he's, uh, again, a, basically a cool spider character that's basically like a gangster Spider-Man, a tough, edgy one that's like suffered and been through a lot, like Deadpool or Wolverine, but yet, and he's like willing to fight like both the versions but the one on the show is Ben Riley that it's like I'm willing to fight and do whatever I'm not gonna let any of these guys kill me because again they had tough lives but uh, yeah and I love how the costume in which I read from um, the creators of Ben Riley and the notes of the Marvel offices is they were trying to come up with a homemade Spider-Man suit. So yeah. And uh, yeah, I love Ben Riley. He's awesome. And Kane. Uh, but another Spider-Man was not, he wasn't even really a Spider-Man in which it was revealed later. He's an actor that portrays as him on TV. And uh, he wasn't very forthcoming of this. And Spider-Man's like, who are you? And, and, he, and he's like, uh, and the TV actor's like, uh, I don't think you'd believe me if I told you. And uh, another Spider-Man is like, where instead of Peter Parker being a humble kid, knowing right from wrong, compassion and knowing what it's like to lose and how to come back on top even though he's fallen down is uh, a spider-man that's rich has a metal suit that's based off the silver and black one in which i got that first appearance and i love that suit it's really cool especially where you use it in spider-man ps1 in a very cool way in which i'll show you that later in which again genius and the other spider-man is the uh, one with two e four extra arms that has the mutation disease that turns into a man spider and the last one is a spider-man that took dr octopus's uh, metal arms for himself to fight crime so yeah the show yeah it was really cool and they an original spider-man was to lead them all to fight spider carnage and it was just like so cool as you can see here i'm like trying to get the whole perfect 10 dodges thing in which i'm like come on dude <laughs> it took me a while to finally remember oh yeah right i can just jump up when they're going to attack me and hit the zip button and that'll count as a perfect dodge i love it when uh, time slows down when you do that i think that's cool and again, uh, I love doing those things of, um, what are they called? Bringing down those shelves on the bad guys. 
I am so bad at times, and I'm working on just doing this, of trying to get four or five guys under there just to bring it down on them. It is so addicting to do that. And here I am just messing around. But, yeah, so back on the... Man, I love the 90s Spider-Man show. It was so good. And, uh... <laughs> Oh, what else? Um, I was going to mention something about... Um, oh, yeah, one alternate version of Spider-Man is Spider-Man as a cowboy. In which I love that one. In which um, he's basically in a cowboy uh, suit with... Uh, oh, I don't know what it's called. But he has a gun, uh, revolvers, that shoots out webs. And it's just so funny. And... Uh... uh Doc Ock is like the evil bad sheriff on the Ultimate Spider-Man TV show. That show was good. And I realize, despite its, again, flaws and imperfections, it was still a cool Spider-Man show. But again, the 90s Spider-Man show, I just loved. And I'll tell you more about that later. But, um, and I thought it was so interesting because, uh, and you know what? I'll tell you more later about Spider Carnage. But take a look at this. I love photo mode. This is just me having fun with it and being like, Hey guys, <laughs> what's hanging? I imagine that he'd like take this photo and send it to Kingpin and Rikers. It's like, we were just thinking about you. Sending our best, Spidey. We'll see you guys. Take care.